Hello Peers, my name is Joanne Gannon and this is my dog Bob. He will feature as your point of reference throughout the video. I'm endeavouring to keep my peers engaged and expectant to gather insight, teacher-based theories and develop classroom management. In this short time I hope that something will be learned. I'll also feature some cool graffiti. My chosen scenario is 15. Rani arrives at the door of your period one class in an agitated state. She reveals to you that she has been receiving a steady stream of short text messages from a group of girls that were until recently her staunch friends. The texts are all of a similar nature, slut, whore, slag, bitch. It seems that she has started seeing a boy and her friends do not approve. The messages started about 24 hours ago. Some of her friends are in, in your current class. An outline of the problem. The problem here is a case of cyberbullying. The tool of weapon is texting. The hurtful words slut, whore, slag and bitch have been repeatedly bombarded to Rani by a girl squad who claim to be her friends and also sit beside her in class. The New South Wales Department of Education Bullying in Schools Policy describes it as Bullying is a repeated verbal, physical, social or psychological behaviour that is harmful and involves the misuse of power by an individual or group towards one or more persons. Cyberbullying refers to bullying, bullying through information and communication technologies. Bullying can involve humiliation, domination, intimidation, victimisation and all forms of harassment, including that based on sex, race, disability, homosexuality or transgender. Bullying of any form or for any reason can have long-term effects on those involved, including bystanders. Conflicts or fights between equals or single incidents are not defined as bullying. Rani is experiencing verbal and psychological cyberbullying, further stating the policy as verbal, which is, again, name-calling, teasing, abuse, put-downs, sarcasm, insults, threats, psychological, for example, spreading rumours, dirty looks, hiding or damaging possessions, malicious SMS and email messages, inappropriate use of camera phones. The policy continues on and a link to the policy is here and their email is. I further would like to state that the Australian Institute of Criminology has a research paper by Dr Ken Rigby that addresses theoretical perspectives on understanding bullying and their implications. In the case of Rani, I could conclude that according to the Australian Institute of Criminology research states, repeated exposure to being bullied can, and indeed often does, undermine the health and well-being of vulnerable students. It is clear that Rani is, ex Rani is experiencing cyberbullying and she would be hurt, humiliated, have a sense of betrayal and in some psychological trauma. Furthermore, the use of the words slut, slag, whore are particularly damaging to a young girl's self-esteem and sense of identity. And as the saying goes, if you throw, throw mud, then some of it sticks. It is clear this is a crisis for Rani. Now, the first priority for classroom management is to protect Rani. Kathleen Allen states, Teachers are also often called upon to teach students social skills that reduce the likelihood of interpersonal conflict and also claim that in classrooms that are managed in ways other than with an authoritative style, a bullying culture can develop. In this scenario, in the first case, I would follow the New South Wales Education Policy Plan 
being the steps protection, prevention, early intervention, response. But given the 24 hour notice, in the second case, I would follow these steps. Approach Rani before the start of the class and reassure her that I am aware of the text messages and how distressing this is, and I will address this in class today. Rani will be given the opportunity to meet with me, the teacher, or a counsellor to discuss further if she needs or wants to. Furthermore, I would address the class acknowledging there is a texting problem which needs to be addressed immediately and that it is not acceptable in any form to, to use the word slut or slag to describe another person. These are negative words which can leave a damaging imprint on a person's identity and soul. No one has the right to deliberately offend or hurt someone through text messaging. I would then address issues of jealousy, friendship betrayal, unkind labels and excluding students. None of this would be tolerated. Areas of jealousy, labelling, peer group bullying would be brought up for class discussion. I would also bring into question by the Australian Institute of Criminology the idea of bullying from this perspective of restorative justice, which addresses family issues around the bullying behaviour and the victims of bullying. A lengthy discussion would be held and a Q&A afterwards. In conclusion, a benchmark of kindness, compassion, positive affirmation would set the benchmark for texting communications and all communications. All students would be given the opportunity to see a school counsellor if they feel they need the need for further insight and for further communications and counselling. As a service teacher, I would look at peer coaching or peer mentoring to better understand and reflect on my own classroom management skills. As Ellen states, peer coaching and mentoring are two vehicles that may provide teachers with the necessary structure and support to learn about, practice and reflect on changing their own classroom management practices. In conclusion, cyberbullying is wrong, it hurts people and can have lifelong damaging effects for the victim and severe consequences for the perpetrators. Kindness, compassion, Affirmative words and positive encouragement is the benchmark for all students, teachers and yes, even the community. <laughs>